Hey, this is Edison Abelard, and in this video, we're going to talk about triggering sounds in Unity 3D. Now, if you look here, I've already had this set up here, and let me quickly show you what we're going to work on. So we have our audio source, we have that all set up, and what we're going to do is, is when you come into this area, we want to know that you just triggered an enter. Then, when we leave, we want to So that's our basic principle. So let's go ahead and, and create one. First, we're going to create an empty game object and just rename it so we don't have a random name in there. So I'm going to name it flush trigger. Then we need physics attached to it. And what we need from the physics is, is our box collider. Now you can go ahead and use any one of these collide. Well, really you can't use any one of them. Don't use mesh because that's way too heavy. So really, you can use a capsule, a sphere, or a box collider. I'm going to use a box collider because it has, ah, it'll serve our purpose. I'm going to increase the size just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to need an audio component and it's going to be the audio source. So let's add that. We have our audio source attached. So now what we want to do is, is create our script. We'll name this flush, we'll call it flush two. And we just select our, our flush trigger and just grab this <clears throat> and drop it here. Now there's nothing in there. So let's go ahead and add the scripts that, or the, the uh, functions we're going to need. First, what I'd like to do is create a, a variable uh, that we can see in Unity so we can swap out audio if we want and make it an audio clip. So let's just call this flush, flush clip, and let's data type it to an audio clip so Unity knows what to expect. And really, we can start off with just really one function on trigger exit. Let's go ahead and we're not going to be <clears throat> We're not going to be using this now, but you do have access to the object that collided with this trigger. So let's go ahead and debug and make sure this is working. Debug dot log. We, we just want to make sure that, that this trigger is firing. Okay, so let's save that real quick Let me get rid of some of these other ones come back into unity. Now we're going to select this. Now I'm going to hit play and you'll notice something. That's weird. What happened was is we're trying to do a trigger event. <clears throat> now the thing is, is that we're doing a trigger event, but we haven't told the collider that it's a trigger. So let's click on this, on this checkbox. And now you'll see when I come in here and I leave, the trigger has fired. So if you ever notice that A, you're being blocked by a collider, which sometimes you might have you know, double colliders or whatnot, if you're using a trigger component or you want to use a trigger function, make sure you have this selected because if you don't, then you won't get the trigger event. So now let's go back to our flush two. Now we know that this is happening. Let's, let's write some more, more code. We know we have an audio source attached. So let's do audio dot. We want to play once. So we run that play shoot. Now, the reason why I have this variable is, is it makes it so much easier to just do our flush, a flush clip. Let's just copy it. And that's all you need to do. Because our variable, let's make sure that we added it. Nope, we have it. Now our variable will hold the audio clip. So all we have to do is come to our sound, click and drag and drop it right onto our flush um, clip. Now this flush clip, remember we wrote in our, let's go back into mono. We wrote in as a variable audio clip. So we go back into Unity, we hit play. And when we come in here, Nothing happens because we don't have a um, trigger enter. We walk. Through. 
Now, there are other things we can do to help enhance this. Uh, one thing we can do is, is, let's add another variable, is flush. And all this is, is we're going to make it true. And we're going to add, let's just copy this and paste it. On trigger enter is what we want to do. Let's, let's just make this descriptive. And so we know we just did enter. And it's flush. We want to check to see if if it's it's is flush equal to true. If it is, then actually you know what? This should be in here. I might get ahead of myself. Is flush equal to true? We're going to actually create a new function. And we're going to play flush. So let's go ahead and let's create this function. Play flush. And we're going to take this audio clip and let's add it into here. All right. And all this does is it separates the code so that when we're developing, um, later on, hint, hint, in another video, we're going to show you how to actually use this because sometimes you want to, to have multiple avenues to do one action. So in this case, we want to make sure that maybe you flush by pressing a button. Maybe, you know, we have infrared and we want to make sure that if you don't manually flush, we want to make sure that um, if you get to a certain distance away from the, the um, toilet bowl that it flushes. Um, so we're going to, we're just separating this out just to make our code so much easier. And this line of code, um, this, line of, this line of code, what it's going to do is check to see if we can flush. So let's set this to false, okay? So now what's going to happen is, is when you, when you come in and you try to, to use the, the flush mechanism, it actually won't work because it's not going, it doesn't have a, an opportunity to set itself to true. So what we're going to do now is, is take this is flush and when the user enters, we want to set is flush to true is equal to true. And after it plays, we want to set this equal to false. So now let's go back into Unity. We can hit play. All right, I'm back in here. Fire it, enter. Now this was simply just, you know, some some um, good coding conventions. And what we're going to do in our next video is is we're going to show you how to, to use maybe a mouse event in order to flush it. Actually, let me show you. If you see right here, we actually have this little pad. So what we wanna do is, is first of all, check and make sure that you technically can touch this. But when you touch this, we wanna make sure that you can flush it manually as well. So this is Edison Abelard. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on how to trigger sounds in Unity 3D. And just to recap, we created our empty game object. We added our box collider. Double check to make sure that it had a trigger. Don't forget this because we're using the trigger events. We made sure we had an audio source because you need that. Um, our audio source actually has play on awake checked. We don't really want that. Um, we can take that off. We created our, our JavaScript. We added our variable that has a data type of clip, if we might. There you go. So we created our flush, and then really all we did is we added two events, our trigger enter and our trigger exit. And when the user exits, we use our audio source, audio play one shot, which just plays it once, and it plays our clip, which we attached. Now, remember that, that function I showed you? One of the great reasons that I personally use Unity, let me make this not maximum. Let's play this again. Is, is 
Unity allows, you'll see, boom, that was checked on. What we can do to debug this is, is actually uncheck it. And you'll see now when I walk away, it doesn't flush. So that's a, a, a great reason why you should, you know, give yourself a little more leeway when, when developing because you can do these, these checks to see if and when things happen. So that's a quick recap of what we did. And like I said, in our next video, we're going to go over how to create a mouse down event that will then check to see if you can flush and then flush it for you. So this has been Edison Abelard. Our squad is Passion47. Check out our website for more. And until the next video, I'm out.